Welcome to episode 118 of Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we continue with the tales of Troy and the story of Menelaus and Helen, Polyxena. By morning, most of the inhabitants of the city were either dead or captured. The Danai could roam through Troy at will and take what they wanted of the boundless treasure stored in the city. They carried their spoils to the ships. Gold, silver, precious stones, many costly utensils, and captive women, girls, and children. In the midst of the throng was Menelaus leading Helen out of the confusion. He was still a little ashamed and yet very happy to have her back. Beside him walked Agamemnon with Cassandra, whom he had rescued from the rough grasp of Ajax. Neoptolemus guided Hector's wife and Dromache from the burning city. Queen Hecuba, who walked with difficulty and tore at her gray hair, which she had strewn with ashes, was the prisoner of Odysseus. Countless other Trojan women followed young and old, and behind them girls and children. Handmaids mingled with the daughters of kings, and all alike sobbed and wailed with anguish. Only Helen was silent. She kept her eyes on the ground, and a blush of shame flooded her face. Then she thought of the fate which awaited her on the ships, and she shivered and paled. Swiftly, she drew her veil over her head and walked trembling at her husband's side. But when she reached the ships, the Achaeans were so dazzled by the flawless beauty of her face and the grace and loveliness of her body that they told themselves it had been well worth while to follow Menelaus to Troy for such a prize and to endure dangers and hardships for ten long years. No one at all thought of hurting Helen in any way. They left her to Menelaus, who, moved by Aphrodite, had forgiven her a long time ago. And now the feasting began. All the heroes lay couched around the board, and in the middle was a bard who struck chords on his lyre and sang the deeds of Achilles, the greatest of all the Argives, until nightfall they made merry. Now, when Helen was alone with Menelaus, she threw herself at his feet, clasped his knees, and said, I know that you have the right to punish me, your faithless wife, with death, but remember that I did not leave the palace in Sparta of my own free will. Perish the trickster took me by force at the very time you were absent from home. I had no husband to protect me. And when I wanted to kill myself, when I lifted the sword or laid the noose around my neck, my tire woman held me back and begged me to think of you and our little daughter. Twas you like with me. I lie at your feet as a penitent, as a suppliant. Menelaus raised her tenderly and answered, Forget the past, Helen, and lay aside your fears. What was done is over. I shall never cherish a grudge against you for any faults you may have had. With that, he took her in his arms and tears of sad and sweet emotion glistened in her eyes. Neoptolemus, son of Achilles, was fast asleep. In his dream, he saw his father looking just as he had in life. The terror of the Trojans and the delight of the Danai. He kissed his son on the throat and eyes and said, do not grieve that I am done, dear son, for now I am in the company of the gods. Do not give yourself up to mourning. Do as I did while I lived. Always be first in battle, but in counsel do not hesitate to yield to the wisdom of men older than yourself. Strive for glory. Enjoy the light of earth and do not let misfortune rest too heavenly on your spirit. My earthly death has taught you how near to the doors of Hades is every mortal. For men are like the flowers in spring. They bloom and they fade. And now tell Agamemnon to sacrifice the most precious and noblest of all the spoils, that my heart may rejoice in the fall of Troy, and nothing be lacking to my content on the heights of Olympus. 
when he had given his son this command, Achilles vanished from Neoptolemus. Lightly and swiftly as wind, he woke and felt as happy as if his father were still alive and had talked to him. In the morning, the Danai rose from their couches, full of impatience to be off on their journey, for their longing for home had grown over great after the sack of Troy. They would have dragged their ships into the sea at once, had not the grandson of Peleus gone among them and detained them with words. Argives, he called in his strong, youthful voice. Last night, my immortal father came to me in a dream and bade me tell you to make him an offering of the best you carried off as spoils from Troy, so that he might have his share of the prizes of war and sate his heart with joy at the fall of this hated city. You shall not leave these shores until you have fulfilled your duty toward dead Achilles, to whom you really owe your conquest. For had he not defeated Hector, we should never have reached our goal. Reverently, the Argives resolved to obey their slain hero. Out of love of Achilles, Poseidon quickened the sea to a tempest, and the breakers rose so high that even had the Danai wished to leave, they would not have been able to. And when they saw the towering waters and heard the howl of the wind, they whispered to one another, Yes, yes, Achilles is indeed descended from Zeus himself. See how the elements are supporting his commands. And they were all the more willing to do as he had bidden and thronged to his burial mound, looming high above the shores of the sea. But now came the question, what to sacrifice? What was best and noblest among all the spoils taken from Troy? Of his own accord, every Argive brought his treasure and captives. When everything had been examined, gold and silver and precious stones, the glory of these as well as all other possessions paled before the beauty of Polyxena, Priam's daughter, and a cry rose up from the throng that it was she who was the best and noblest of the spoils. The girl did not blanch when she saw all eyes fixed on herself. She remained steadfast, even when Hecuba, her mother, pressed forward from the crowd of captives and wailed aloud. For Polycena was willing to die for the sake of Achilles. She had seen him from the walls, and although he was the enemy of Troy, his beauty and strength had stirred her innermost being. There was even a rumor that once, when the battle had been carried to the very gates of the city, Achilles had seen Polyxena on the ramparts. His heart had quickened with love, and he had called to her, Daughter of Priam, if you fell to my share, who knows if I should not try to make peace between your father and the Argives? It seems that the hero regretted his words the moment they were spoken, for he remembered he'd owed to Greece. But Polyxena so they say, was deeply touched by them, and from that day on had burned the secret love for the foe of her people. Be that as it may, the girl did not falter when all eyes fastened on her and all lips proclaimed her the only offering fit for the greatest of heroes. An altar had been reared at the burial mound of Achilles, and the utensils for the sacrifice lay in readiness. And then, before anyone knew what was happening, the princess sprang forward from among the other captive women, seized a dagger, and clinging to the altar like a victim, drove it into her heart. She fell to the ground without a word or a sigh. A wave of lament rang through the Argive host. Old Queen Hecuba threw herself over her daughter's body, with many tears, and her women wailed with pity and sorrow. The moment Polyxena sank to the earth and the crimson blood spurted from her breast, the sea grew as calm and smooth as a mirror. Overcome with compassion, Neoptolemus hurried to the altar, helped them carry Polyxena away, and saw to it that she was buried with the honors due a princess. But Nestor rose in the council of the Argives and said, At last, the hour for our journey home has come. The Lord of the sea has bridled the breakers. As far as the eye can reach, not a crest of foam is to be seen, 
not even a ripple. Achilles is content. He has accepted the sacrifice of Polyxena. Let us launch our ships and sail. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.